Oh, well, all right. Let us let us um let us continue with this. And now here's a second here's a second point concerning this um feast of trumpets or the Yom uh, Teruah. It's a very interesting um books and studies right here. Um, let's just share a little bit of this with you. We don't have time to get into all of it, but perhaps you can find it somewhere. Most of this is like we don't have this unfortunately on our book list. But if there, well, there is always time to redeem. You know, there's always that redemption time. You know, uh, as the Bible says, it says redeeming the time rather. We should always be redeeming the time. So we'll see what we can do um, about that. There's this book right here. It was an old book. I actually got this for collections from rare books. The Almighty really provided for I and I, and He'll provide for you as well as long as you trust in Him and recognize that he is, and he's closer to you than your juggler vein. He is the life in you, that small, still voice. Um, the voice of truth, should we also qualify that voice. Now, this is prophecies and predictions. Everyone's guide to the coming changes, as you can see. Everyone's guide to the coming changes. And here they show you a series of, like, um, I think it's in the sun, cosmic, global, kind of, yeah, it's the earth and the sun, or the different land masses of the earth. And you see that, that region that they always show you right there in the Horn of Africa, East Africa, and Ethiopia? That's that's the crux of the matter. That's the cross. That's the cross. That's the crux of the whole matter right there. This book, which was, um, it covered a period from 75 to 2001. And they put it under the category of futurism. Future, but that might be a good title, Future Things. Some would say it only goes up to 2001, and people say, well, what, what about now? What is very strangely interesting, it's almost as though seven years was not lost, but it's almost like the last seven years period of this book right here wasn't so much that seven-year period of time right there, but when you look at these years now, especially since 2000, 2001, it seems to be catching up. It's the mercy of the Almighty that really, I think, is slowing down, you understand, and allowing time for ones to decide for him or against him. Now, this book talks about, like, the magnetics, the weakening magnetic sphere, the magnetic pole, reversal theory, um, meteor showers, and, and falling stars. It's talking about certain falling stars, which... Um, are said to, uh, for example, check this one, check this out right here. It says the surreal or weird events of of the book of prophecy revelation may become quite plausible when viewed in the correct perspective. So that means we haven't been looking, and humanity has been misdirected and distracted about looking in the wrong way or perspective. For instance, tektite falls, and polar reversals appear as quote. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together. Now, what's interesting about this Elanin, the comet, and the Yom Teruah, and the correspondence of the alignment, what is very interesting about it is that in our Torah or our true Hebraic um, order, the Torah portion readings, we're actually coming to that time where the scrolls are actually rolled up, where we're, where we're ending off one year with the fall festival season to begin the new year. So it's also the time of the rolling up of the scrolls. Now, we're not saying that's the only interpretation, but it's a key that that also can be seen, especially from today's point of view. Revelation chapter 6, verse 13 to 14, or check this one out for size. And there fell upon men, there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. Now, we've been seeing so-called what man and the media and the seclorum calls wicked weather. We've been seeing these signs of, quote, so-called wicked weather, which is a misnomer right there, 
as well and hail we've been seeing some interesting hail hail uh, big 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 everything from golf ball to a softball size hail has been coming down this is revelation 16 and 21 and then from matthew 24 29 hear this immediately after the tribulation of those days the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken now is it that the powers of heaven shall be shaken or the perspective from those on earth because the earth now is shaken because of the force the pull the push and pull of other cosmic forces upon the earth are actually shaken now it says that even minor changes in the earth's axis of rotation or a wobble can affect quote to a surprising extent both the climate at the surface of the earth and the forces and stresses within it says a physicist named Hertzler Hertzler said this said that that um, even minor changes even even a minor changes in the earth's axis or the rotation people say it's like time is flying that could either be a combination of either speeding up slowing down or even a wobble where one doesn't notice that wobble and even the digital technology and clocks are not able to pick up because that wobble doesn't have to be a big long wave sort of wobble it could be something very very minor in fact they even discovered that one of Einstein's laws may not be correct but it's a it's a theory of relativity Einstein said that based on what we know this is my theory he didn't say based on what we learn later on Einstein even said some of the things that he discovered we'll learn more later on but it was to help them get there but even these laws of science are their laws their understanding of the laws of science it is obvious there are higher laws that they never regarded nor thought to understand so we are seeing a climate change at the surface of the earth with the forces and stresses within it there seems to be no set linear progression to the earth's changing dynamics but rather an interaction and synergistic fusion of geophysical events such as earthquakes we've been having a couple of those volcano eruptions hearing about that weather changes look around look around solar activity look up look up and rotation changes be still and no you understand for instance within the last few years it has been established that earthquakes of 7.5 magnitude on the Richter scale are either the cause or the effect we maintain it the latter the writers of this book said it was actually the the latter some say it might be the cause the earthquakes that are at 7.5 magnitude and that recent earthquake wasn't at least they didn't report it to be like that but I'm sure the closer to the epicenter the worse it was but they say that that earthquakes of that magnitude are either the cause or the effect we would maintain as the authors of this book it's most likely the effect that that earth the earthquake so far they haven't told us what was going on some would say there was exploding a bomb the conspiracy theorists under the earth they might have but that also can affect the rotation in order to affect time remember the stargate the stargate series they they travel back and forth through time or in time through solar flares so there's something that they know that they're not fully revealing to the rest of us with solar flares and time travel perhaps also they try to buy time on the earth too, the fall beings by having these underground explosions and and earth to, to cause certain wobbles like that or to take advantage of of, of the, the effects of a in regular wobble described by the North Pole okay rotation now they said since 1900 this rotational regularity has been measured by astronomers who say that it reaches a maximum every seven years check this out astronomers have been doing this research since the 1900s scientific research where one somebody else can come behind them and check out their findings and we have better equipment to really find out if the former people were right and exact so they have come to conclusion that this irregularity of the rotation of the earth 
it reaches a maximum every seven years, a period of activity which exactly correlates with the peaks, the so-called peaks of earthquake activity. Like we said, this book has a lot much more, and we'd love if we had the time to go through everything. But the best thing, hey, check it out, see if you can get a copy. You understand, even some used books out there. Of course, first come, first serve. But it's Prophecies and Predictions by um, Moira Timms. See if you can get the author's name, Moira Timms. It's somewhat dated, and it's by Unity Press. But it's very interesting in how it dovetails both the science and the Bible. A lot of folks, you know, try to dismiss the Bible instead of interpreting the Bible in its correct. After all, those so-called Christians who enslaved our ancestors, they must have not had it correct because they believe themselves, converts, to actually be, you understand, the Beta Israel. So that shows that they were going from a deluded, you know, premise in, in major ways. Now, along with that book, these are some other books right here by, um, by a certain uh, Christian community. Let me see, The Home Bringing Mission of Jesus Christ. Um, one was, I don't know if they are, what they're doing with themselves right now, but this is the radiation fields. This book is about the radiation fields. The radiation fields, the creation of fall worlds, and the future of mankind, a revelation and prophecy that the world does not know. Very interesting. This one we also find to be highly interesting. We hope we will have opportunity to share this. This is called The Preparation, The Preparation for the Dissolution of All Material Forms and the Coming of the Lord. So the preparation for the dissolution of all material forms and the coming of the Lord. Over the years, we have had opportunity to check out um, some of these books. And what is interesting is that, though it seemed wild what it said years ago, as more and more comes out, as we have Internet, as there's a better ability to get a more wide range and diverse um, set of opinion and commentary and input, a lot of what's in here is not so far off after all, although it would seem so. So these two books are extremely in interesting to show the cosmic, the cosmic, what's happening cosmically. Now, perhaps we, w we, we can see if we can even um, um, get some of these printed up or ones can check them out. I think you can check them out. They have a website now. We just want to share, share that with you. And then this is another one of their books, um, The Soul on Its Path to per Perfection which is a very, very good Christian work. This is a very, very good Christian work. Although they have a, a prophetess, there's a prophetess, and one would kind of uh, say, oh, that could be a false. How could she? She's a female. They were female prophets. Let's not, let's not get it twisted. Um, they say you judge the tree by its fruits. So looking at the fruits of what have been declared in these documents, and some of these documents go back to like 1979. So what's interesting that all these books that we're showing you here were some older stuff um, that uh, was put out. And perhaps, you know, you need to check it out or if you can check it out or, or contact us, link us if you're really interested. And, and we'll, we'll try to see what we can um, do about that. Um, well, let's talk about the point. This is just a, a preview to Nibiru. Because this kind of the, the contents of those things link with some of the best um, speculation, interpretation, or prediction of what has been talked about in this new age culture. Because some new ages, there's different, um, there's spiritual wickedness too. You know what I mean? In high places, you know what I mean? There's, there's spiritual wickedness out there as well, taking some of these same things for Antichrist and not for Christ. This is why ones have to be wise to salvation and also have it grounded, rooted and grounded. Nothing can take away from the experience of the lost sheep in the Americas and the Caribbean. That is real, 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 yet nobody wants to talk about it. We thank Ahmed and Anita Jad for talking about it. The, the king of Persia, you understand, the prime minister of Persia even mentioned it. Um, but the United States and... Um, France and some of the other Europeans, they walked out on that. But they can't walk out on this next point. That's Nibiru. 
That is Planet X. This is Comet E. Lenin. You understand? Or some call it Tai Chi or Tai Chi, which is called the Brown Dwarf Star. They label it as a Brown Dwarf Star, right? Here's the second point. A planet or a star. It's, remember, Pluto was downgraded from being a planet to being a star, right? But a planet or a star nearing Earth with possibly four to eight planets or moons, and maybe it's perhaps, they're not too sure just yet until they get a better glimpse of it, um, but might be too late then, maybe comets or asteroids that are coming along with it. There's an article that's on the Daily Mail in the U.K., and it talks about the, the Tai Chi or the Tai Chi. Let's, let's write this, Tai Chi or the Tai Chi. It is spelled T-Y-C-H-E. Now, let's put a little asterisk there. So Tai Chi or Tike or Tai Chi. You understand? Tai Chi um, or TK, the brown dwarf star. Now, there is a possible planet or star, Nibiru, with maybe four to eight of its moons or its planets that are headed into this orbit, that are, in other words, that are coming this way to this planetary orbit. And it's going to, according to the, the projected trajectory, it's going to fly through our inner solar system and be seriously very possibly very close enough to the planet Earth to bring a possible either catastrophe or what's known in, in biblically and, and from the older writers as a catabol, the catabol. In other words, what happened in the beginning? They say, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end of times where certain stars or, or asteroids fell to Earth, wiping out all of that primordial, that old primordial life, such as the dinosaur, dinosaurs. Because they said if one of these kind of big comets or something or, or an asteroid falls to Earth, it can set up a dust bowl or even rise the water table to such a point, and also as, as well as cause a wobble. You understand where the Earth could actually slow its rotation? This could be where, where the prophetically it talks about why do you want the day of the Lord to come? You don't want the day of the Lord to come. The day of Adonai is a dark day and there is no light in it. In other words, it's, it's, it's not a pleasant time. Imagine all of our cell phone communications, all of our uh, digital technology, probably power will be knocked out in a lot of places. Think about it for a moment. Do you really want that? Now, what can we do about it? If that's what's headed our way, the best thing we can do is spiritually prepare ourselves, and it's never, ever too late. It's, it's never too late to repent. It's never too late, you understand, to call upon as they said, the name of the Lord in prayer. It's never, ever too late. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe the hype. People say, 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 but you don't know what I did. You, you're still caught up in your self-righteousness. You understand what you did. It's not about what you did. It's about what he did, what our black Lord and Savior has done. You understand for all of us. So just recognize that. Now, this whole situation it's possibly, and we're not, we don't want to overhype it. You better, get, you better get extra water. You better do all that because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. All we know is based on what has already happened and what true and best scientific research tells us is the possibility. Like possibly if I have a piece of paper and I light it with a lighter, it is possible that the paper is going to catch on fire. Now, I could, I could fire coat it or, or wet it or do something else like that, and it might not happen. Now, if I add gasoline, it's going to light on fire even quicker. You understand? So we don't know what new elements might be introduced into this equation, but this is a very serious situation, and this is serious truth that we have to blow the trumpet and, and warn ones. What's very important, especially our brothers and sisters in, in, in faith, what's... Um, What's very important is that this comment, 
planet or star is here. They already saw that it was there, but now it is here. And its headed trajectory is to this inner, you know, to this inner inner solar system. And it's probably actually already going through the outer bands, you understand, or, or approaching the outer bands perhaps right now. Because you look, today is the 22nd. That's the 28th. We have about, what is it, what is it, about um, five days, you know, to the 27th. Oh, the 27th. Did you know that, I, I, I caught this out there somewhere, you know some people do these numbers, but the numbers are interesting too, because the numbers are most of the time when it's properly calculated accurate, that the 27th of September would be something, something like 3,666 days or something. Um, it's interesting. They said b b before 9-11 or, 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 or something like that. It was kind of interesting how they did the math. I'll try to bring that. But what was interesting, I guess, is the 3666. And it's also one day before this, um, this, this comet really starts to cut across this solar system. You understand? And who knows what the push and pull of the magnetics of the Earth and the solar system are, that if there are comets or asteroids within the belt or connected with this planet or brown, or a small brown dwarf star, it might pull some of this actually into the, the orbital um, frequency. You understand? And it's really, you know, it'll make some of these movies that we've been maybe seeing over the years look like... Um, uh, a, a child's play, but a lot of this already was known. Let's just put that out there. A lot of it already was known, the possibility of this happening. It's just that right now, brothers and sisters and others, this is what's going on. It could be it'll just pass through like nothing and, and the mockers will go on mocking and the scoffers will go on scoffing until um, a surprise. But not very likely when you look at the wickedness that's going on and the imagination of wickedness on the earth. At its closest approach to Earth, it will only be about 21 to 23 million miles away. That might sound like a lot, but the sun, for comparison, is about 93 million miles away. So think about that. The sun is 93 million miles away. Think about that for a moment. The sun is 93 million miles away, and at its closest, it looks that big. Now, this, which they say might be like Jupiter, some don't know how big it is, but they estimate it might be like Jupiter, will be 21 to 23 million miles away. Now, NASA, that old serpent, anyway, NASA, the NAS, uh, the NASA or NESA, lifting up, rising up, will also link to repentance in, a, in another way of interpretation. Jet Propulsion Laboratory, California Institute of Technology, orbit for Comet E. Lenin, you understand, gives you some other, you know, you could click and they'll show you exactly where they, because they're watching this. They are, wa they are watching, watching, watching this, you understand, for the orbit diagram. Another estimate, actually, there's another estimate that they don't like too much. But it's out there, and it's from some reputable scientific sources. The other estimate puts the distance at only maybe 37,000 miles away. Now, whether satellites orbit at 40,000 miles away, just, just, for, just for a reference. So, so whether satellites orbit at 40,000 miles away, and there's another estimate of this comet, which puts the distance at 37,000 miles away. Now, Comet E. Lenin revised trajectory is interesting, the revised trajectory. Some of this is best for you to go probably look it up for yourself. We want to just highlight some of the main, some of the main um, points right here. Um, we're not, not going to deal with the astronomical unit right now, which is really the distance, the distance from the Earth to the sun, 93 million miles away. Now, when we look at um, Luke, excuse me, it's not too late for a, good, for a good tea time. After all, we should enjoy the good things that we can enjoy while we can enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And also give, give, give praise. 
you know, give praise to the true life giver and the source of our life in the name of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshi. Now, let us look at Luke for a moment. Let's look at what Luke's uh, gospel says. Turn your Bibles to Luke uh, 21 and um, 21 and 25. All right, that was a time check right there. The, the beeping, if you hear that beeping in the background. All right. And there shall be signs. Excuse me, we touched on this before. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. Everybody's going to say, the government better do something about this comment. <laughs> You know, it's it's just ridiculous. They're gonna say the government better do something about uh, uh, why I pay my taxes for. Uh, sorry, this is this this is above the um, pay grade. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Then it speaks in verse twenty five. Here's a significant thing. Verse twenty five of Luke chapter twenty one says that men's hearts failing them for fear, men's hearts failing them. In other words, some are going to see all of this and probably just faint, just give, give I mean, just die in their, their hearts because of fear. Fear will, fear will be the biggest killer. You understand? According to Caduce uh, Luke as Wengel, the gospel of, of, of St. Luke, men's hearts failing them for fear. And looking after those things which are coming. In other words, when they see some of the first signs of it, they're going to think about, well, this is getting worse. This is not, this, how can this get better? And when they look for those things which are coming on the earth, their hearts, uh, people are going to give out. You understand? For the powers of heaven, this is where it says in Luke's gospel, the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and possibly there might be other um, satellites coming down too. This is this is you know this is what we don't you know um, the best thing to do at a holy time is to stay in the holy place and to stay in the holy grace. So we wouldn't wouldn't advise a whole bunch of kind of travel and so forth and so on, if, uh, unless it's, it's it's unavoidable. You understand? Then ones one should. You understand? If ones can find a uh, a quiet place, especially in their heart and their mind, it, it, it is better to stay um, prayerful and in the spiritual, in a spiritual, to ground themselves spiritually. Because I'm sure there will be a lot of other folks who are not going to be grounded and people who you might love. And if you are able to ground yourself spiritually in the true faith, you might be able to give them uh, a word of wisdom or a spiritual rhema word to even strengthen them as well. But Common E. Lenin is possibly a planet, a star. There's a possibility. They, they call it common, but there's a big possibility that it is actually a planet or a small brown dwarf star, they call it. But they say that um, it might be even a binary star of our sun. There might be some connection that it was a part of, like when the sun came to birth, this could be the sun's afterbirth or relation to the sun. But there's a note. If this is only a comet, possibly or probably nothing to worry about. Here's, this is the good news. If it is just a comet, there might not be that much to worry about right now. But it's definitely one of the signs. Remember what the word says in, in Luke 21 um, and 25, 26. It basically says that there be signs. So there's a possibility this is only a sign. But if it is a star or a planet, it could be major trouble. I mean, it could have really major, major problems. And there are some who have actually um, theorized and speculated on that. And you probably can find their videos um, out there with a lot, of, a lot of pretty pictures and other stuff to look at. You understand? If you want to see that, we're just bringing and presenting the word in this in this volume in this version right here. But the possible planet or star that's coming this way is, or could be, what was known to the ancients, and you probably heard so much about this. 
some of us have heard a lot about it. Some of y'all may just be hearing about this the first time. A plan that's known as uh, Tai Chi or Tai K, TK, you understand? Or as Nibiru, the Nibiru planet. And this goes back to the ancient Sumerian. This goes back to the ancient Assyrian. It goes back to the ancient past and the Anunnaki and and um, the Nephilim, the, the fallen angels or watches or uh, it's different speculations on it. We're not going to entertain all of that right here. But this is called, usually the best name is Planet X because they really don't know. So they basically call it X. But where we touch on the X is also a symbol of the cross as well too. So that's an interesting interpretation. They call this the destroyer. This is called the destroyer. Some call this wormwood. This is what we found interesting. We said we definitely have to share this, that some call this wormwood. You know, wormwood, I think we addressed it in a recent, um, um, I think it was 9-11, uh, um, 9-11 to 9, what was it, 9-21 or so, 10 years later, 9-21 of uh, Revelation chapter 9 is, I think, where the mention of wormwood, uh, if I'm correct, wormwood is mentioned there. So we just touched on this for the 9-11. Check that out and even compare that to this. Some even call it the hammer of God. Even based on the ancient, the ancient it would have been interpreted the hammer of the gods or the ha Elohim in the sense of gods. But it's the hammer of God slash gods. The real word in Genesis would be the plural in that plain interpretation sense. If it is a brown dwarf star, it could be the start of what Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1 has. So just check that out so you, at least you would be informed if you, if you are willing. And Isaiah, portion of Isaiah says this, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Because people will, I mean, I mean, you can just imagine the chaos that will be going on, and um, standing every 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 city will fall. Every city will fall besides um, New Jerusalem. You understand? Besides um, the Mount Zion, you know, every city basically is going to fall. Every city will fall. Every city is connected to the seclorum. Every city is connected to this network, to this grid, this man-made and demon-possessed grid. You understand? And when that happens, if this is a connection with that, then behold, Yahweh maketh empty the earth, maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down. It's interesting, the connection with the magnetivity, the magnetic pole reversal and everything, and they say that this could also help to reverse the magnetic poles. But the magnetic poles reverse. Some speculate that the Earth, either, either or, could rotate in some weird ways, even upside down. Don't don't put that possibility out of the equation. Or the reversing of the magnetics would make those on the Earth feel. I mean, it, it would really have a devastating effect, especially done in a very dramatic way, especially with no other distraction. You understand, with other media and technology, if that's knocked out, there'll be no other distraction. So, of course, people will be paying attention to it, and they would also be feeling it more. Now, the day of the Lord could commence towards the end of this September. And, and, and what, 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 how, how do we count the months? Um, 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 September, October, November. Wasn't October? October? It, 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 is it October? October is the next month, right? Yeah, so October was always the month of judgment. Some say it's the month of dawn. It's a judgment month. October is a judgment month. October, November, when the comet or the planets also near the earth. You understand? So this is coming into this orbit. Now, the day of the Lord could and, 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 and will, will, we say it could be this, but when it happens, it will come as a sneer to those living on the earth. It's going to come as a trap. Imagine an animal just foraging through the forest, you understand, and the wooded lands, you know, just, just going about its own little business. And then all of a sudden, bang, a trap hits it, a sneer. A sneer was laid there for it. 
In other words, the day of the Lord in the same way. People will be going, buying and selling, going about their business, doing whatever they're doing, so forth and so on, and bam, it, it will happen like a sneer to those living on planet Earth. And this is the ha, uh, Ha-Din or the Yom Ha-Din. The day of the Lord is a time of doom. Yahweh says it's not a happy day. Yahweh says that there's some that say, I can't wait till the Lord come and judge all of this stuff. But then the prophets say, and the Biyad say, <laughs> Why, why do you want to rush on the day of the Lord? Do you know what the day of the Lord is? It's not a time of happy, happy, hallelujah, we are, you know, no, no, no. It, it, it is a time of, of doom and gloom. It's, it's a dark day even. Now, whether it's a day of metaphysical darkness only or if it's a day of actually knocking out the light of the sun because of some sort of interplanetary hit, we don't know. But Yom Hadin. According to Daniel 9 and 27, which is Yom Teruah, some equal the rapture. It is a type of rapture. We will say Awo, Amen, but not quite as the counterfeit Christians have, have made ones to believe are going to happen, some say, the same day. But now, let's not limit an earthly day to a solar day. Let's not limit a earthly day. You know what I'm saying? To a cosmic day. So let's understand when Yahweh speaks, he says, as I'm above the earth, I'm above you. In other words, as, as I am above and you are below, the way I'm looking at it is a higher way. As he is higher, even being the spirit of truth, you know what I'm saying? And being the true spirit. And that's a higher level than this coarse, condensed carbon or organic structure that we are, are carrying that we call our vehicle, our body, so forth and so on. Now, to be classified as a brown star, the star would have to be at least the size of Jupiter. Did you know that? So when it says small brown, they'll say, "Oh, don't worry about it. It's just a, it's it's a, it's a brown dwarf star." But to be classified as such, it would have to be at least the size of Jupiter. Nibiru could be four times the size of Jupiter. That would make Nibiru or Taiki or Tiche a pretty massive planet or star. And there's some interesting pictures of it on the, on the YouTubes and on the Internet, and you can go and, and, and Google it while the Google is still working pretty much. Now, Jupiter, the Earth, the moon, right? The moon is 2,100 miles across. Earth is 8,000 miles across. Now, this planet is thought at the moment, and this is speculation, but let's just consider it. It's thought at the moment to be at at least 50,000 miles across. Did, did you get that? That the moon is 2,100 miles, the Earth is 8,000 miles, and this planet is estimated right now to be 50,000 miles across. We better hope it's, it's a real small, small, it's a, it's a small, small dwarf. You understand? It's a small, tennis, tennis dink, dink kokeb, right? Um, comment E-L-E-N-I-N. This also could be a cold word, because remember, some people say, well, where did the name come from? The ancients call it Nibiru, if this is it, call it Nibiru. These people call this comet, quote, comet, end quote, they call it the E-Lenin. What does E-Lenin mean? Some say it could be a code word for the elites. It could be for the, for the so-called rulers, the temporal rulers who are working for the fall beings or the demonic entities through their witchcraft and, and secret society and cultic worship. They have broken that breach. You understand? And they are working with the fallen, the, the, you could say the fallen angels, the demons, the devil, their protege, and so forth and so on. This is a part of it. But they say E-L, and let's just go right here for a moment while we sum this up, that E-L-E-N-I-N can also stand for extinction, level, event, Nibiru is near. Extinction level event, Nibiru is near. Did you get that? That's, that's a possible acronym. Now, we all know that the elites, 
from the so-called rulers, the temporal rulers, those who have profited, profited off of the, um, the blood of, of the lost sheep, of our ancestors, the skull and the bones and the blood and the flesh of our ancestors, you understand? They have bunkers. They, they, they're going to get away, or so they think. They have bunkers. Now, um, there's a picture out there of what looks like a, a solar system, and, and it could be what is headed this way. Now, I, 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 I don't know, and, and I and I is not going to say that this whole um, star or planet thing is, is, is real. You understand? However, many of us have been doing a lot of research and searching on the Internet, reading and watching videos and even praying on this and have come to a real serious um, conclusion, you understand, that based on the information and the, the, the verifiability of the information past and present, this is very serious. Can we say with 100% um, confidence that we know this? But then let's ask ourselves. If this was anything else, if they're saying that a storm, a possible storm is coming, right, just like this kind of thing. Some people, like I said, some storms came, hurricanes, and people didn't get out the way, and many of them were killed. This, too, can be an event just like it. So I would say it, it behooves us to know about it, not to buy in like, like, like some of the New Ages have just bought in, and they still uh, uh, don't know too much about it but they believe it's like what they want. This is not our desire. We're not hoping that this is Nibiru and this brings these cata catabolic, um, catabolic circumstances to bear on the earth. But what we're saying is that there's a strong possibility that it might be. And if it's a planet, you know what I'm saying, or if it's a comet, I personally, I'm more in favor of, of, of based on the evidence, um, that it's a planet that it's actually a planet. I could be wrong about it. I could be wrong that it's not really a comet like they say, but it seems like a planet. You understand? Now, I and I could be right. And there's others who have also been doing their studies on this. You understand? And the conclusion is that based on all the other scientific knowledge that is there and that's verifiable as, as basically true, this is more like a planet than just a, a comet. Now, if it is a planet or a star, it could really be the start or, in a sense, a fulfillment, a, a, an opening, in that sense, of this part of Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1, where it says that Adonai, Yahweh, turneth the earth upside down. He turneth the earth upside down. In that very same chapter, at verse um, 17, Isaiah 24, it says, Fear, and this is very interesting, and we might just pause for the chorus right here um, around this part, although there is much more information that, that we have to share, and we might try to give regular updates over these next, um, um, how you say, uh, six days or so these next six days, so it will be here or be in the orbit. In fact, when it's really fully in our orbit and the alleged first effects, if there are any, should be manifested, it will be another Shabbat time. It will be another Sabbath time. So that is also a very important, because um, no matter what, the Almighty still gives his people, those who submit themselves to his way, an opportunity to remain firmly grounded you understand? So check this part out right here. Isaiah chapter 24, 17 says this, that fear and the pit and the sneer are all are upon thee, O inhabitants of the earth, verse 18, and it shall come to pass that he that flieth from the noise of the fear. So some are going to run from the noise of the fear. The prophet says, shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the sneer. Chan. It's like it's saying there's no, where are you going to run to the, the earth is going to be turned upside down. This is a global, this is a global event. We're moving into times of global events. You understand? For the windows from on high are open. 
the windows on high are open. And just a note, a footnote I'll put right here to the windows on high are open. Recently, they say the magnetic level of the earth has really dropped down. If the magnetic level was high as it was in other past times, even with um, particles and asteroids and other things flying out there, the, the earth's true strength magnetic wave will be able to repel most of these kind of um, cosmic objects. But right now, it's like the earth's windows are open. You understand? The earth's, the, the earth's windows are, 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 are open at the, at the present, at the present time. Um, is that, all right, yeah. All right, yeah, you're not, uh, some, some light is flashing. Hold on for a moment.